on youtubers it is your boy deluxe man and welcome to another SummerSlam review for my SummerSlam review series so we're 10 years in for SummerSlam so far I only count two noteworthy shows at least two shows that were good the rest of the shows were either average or okay or just bad until we get to this year 1998 this was the start of SummerSlam being the WrestleMania of the summer for being one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year. This is where it started, here in the Attitude Era. 1998 is the year I, myself, became a wrestling fan. First wrestling show I ever saw, some of you may know, WrestleMania 14, Stone Cold Steve Austin versus the Heartbreak Kid Shawn Michaels with Mike Tyson. My seven-year-old mind was never the same. 1998 was the year for wrestling. The Attitude Era was in full swing. Every show is sold out. Every crowd is hot. Every wrestler has a character. Every division has an angle. And every match meant something. There was no wasted expense for anybody. WWF went all out to make their shows the best wrestling shows to watch. They took things from WCW and even things from ECW to come up with what we call the Attitude Era. And man, did they ever fight back. WWF got sick. They got sick and tired of WCW kicking their tails on a weekly basis. And I think this is the year they finally were able to get some victories over WCW. Now, WCW did beat them in ratings here and there. But it wasn't just WCW and WWF trailing behind. They would trade back and forth. The real war started this year. But during this time, Stone Cold Steve Austin was on top as the WWE Champion. He had the Smoke and Skull belt. Austin was awesome. Everything he did was just freaking fantastic. And that's the bottom line, cause Stone Cold said so. Give me a hell yeah. There was no what yet. That's coming. That's coming. It's not this year though. But he was involved in that historic rivalry with Vincent Kennedy McMahon, the evil boss. Bret Hart was working in WCW because of the Montreal screw job. Shawn Michaels was out on injury. He suffered a back injury in a casket match against The Undertaker. He worked all the way through WrestleMania, but after that, he needed time off. This was supposed to be a career ending injury for HBK. As we find out in 2002, it was not. But that's to come later on. The fact that the company managed to move on, not just move on, but prosper without those two says a lot. But the roster, when you look at it, it makes sense. We got Val Venus. We got D'Lo Brown. D-Generation X. X-Pac, Triple H, the New Age Outlaws. You got The Rock and the Nation of Domination. You got Sable, Edge. Ken Shamrock, Owen Hart, Mankind, Mick Foley, whatever you want to call him, Undertaker, you got Kane. The roster was at its, in terms of characters and overall larger than life personalities, this was the best the roster has ever been. The absolute best. This is the perfect time to become a wrestling fan. It was an extremely hot period for the WWF, and the SummerSlam reflected it. In terms of the quality for this SummerSlam, of course it was good. I don't think anyone disputes the quality of this SummerSlam. So far, to me, this is the best one. Is it the best one overall? <laughs> that one's coming. But definitely, right now, it is the best SummerSlam I've seen. A really good show. It set a new bar for SummerSlam as a whole, because, again, this is the SummerSlam that created that idea that SummerSlam can be just as good as WrestleMania. For real. 
Let's get to some details, and then we get to the actual card. So the show was two hours and 40 minutes. It aired on August 30th, 1998, in Madison Square Garden, as per usual for any anniversary show. New York City, New York. Attendance sold out. 21,588. Isn't that over? Because they usually just do 20,000. They did more than 20,000. Shoot, they were doing overflows. That makes sense. Commentary was, of course, Jim Ross and Jerry the King Lawler. This is the first SummerSlam where they actually become the permanent uh, commentary team. The best one, in my personal opinion. And they don't change until... <laughs> until 10 years later, honestly, when they do the draft. So get used to seeing those two for the next few SummerSlams. Ring announcer is Howard the Fake, who apparently was involved in the angle with Jeff Jarrett and X-Pac. So we'll talk about him just a little bit in just a second, but... First match, right off the bat, Val Venus versus D'Lo Brown for the European Championship. D'Lo Brown is the champion at this point. He is one of those talents that people appreciated for his in-ring ability, but he had charisma. You know, he had spunk. He had a swagger to him. I like when he shook his head like that. I miss D'Lo Brown. You know who I also miss? I also miss Val Venus. I miss the big Val Boski. Hello, ladies. I just... I just miss these characters, man. It was a solid match overall. Unfortunately, I feel like the ending took away from it. Weird finish. Because the referees were getting a lot more involved in the matches during that time, which we don't see nowadays. The referee screwed up. Val Venus's dive off the top rope and basically almost helped D'Lo Brown win. Uh, Val Venus had to push the referee away. And as a result, he got himself disqualified and D'Lo Brown retains. I don't know if I like that. Personally... If they would have, well, if they would have had a clean finish and cut back on the length of the match, just a tad bit, it would be better. Because these two were bloated. You can tell they were tired. So, decent match overall. I'm not going to sit here and say it was a bad match. I just feel like it could have been better if it was shorter and we had a clean finish. At least it was better than this match. Look, I know a lot of people praise the Attitude Era. They think everything they do in the Attitude Era is gold. This is a match that shows you it was not all good. So we have a 3v4 handicap match. Kai and Tai, indeed, versus the Oddities. I don't know who the hell the Oddities are. I am glad I don't know who they are because this match sucked. This match was horrible. This match was like scraping a cheese grater across the side of my head. This was bad. Clearly the piss break match of the night. Luckily, that was the only bad match on the card. The rest of the matches are solid to good. Hair versus hair. Jeff Jarrett versus X-Pac with Howard Finkel. Now, Jeff Jarrett has been, at this point, bullying poor Howard. And it led to the point where Howard had to enlist the help of DX. And the match was good. I thought these two worked very well. One, two, three, kid. Sean Waltman, X-Pac, whatever you want to call him. I don't even understand... Why he doesn't get enough respect. Because he should. He's had some of the best matches in WWE. But he doesn't get a lot of respect. When we get to 2001, we'll talk about it. Because, ugh, X-Pac heat. X-Pac wins and he cuts off Jeff Jarrett's hair. Well, the razor he had didn't work. So he had to use actual scissors. But he does eventually get the buzz. And then we have a tag match between Sable and the debuting Edge. Before he was rated R. And... You know, doing five-second poses and brood, really. He was just Edge. But they took on Jacqueline and Mark Merrow. Uh, I believe Jacqueline was Sable's WrestleMania opponent, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, tag match was solid. It was just there to make Sable look good and put Edge over as well. They worked very well, and I liked it. You know what I also liked? This Lion's Den match. So the Lion's Den match is basically WWE's version of UFC. There's a cage, an octagon cage, and you win by making the opponent submit. I liked it. I thought it was unique. I am kind of shocked we don't do this anymore. See, this is also something I miss. Ken Shamrock had his own match called the Lion's Den match. Every person had their own thing. If you don't have a catchphrase, if you don't have a personality or a gimmick, you had your own match. You had your own belt. You had something. And Ken Shamrock had his own freaking match. I hate the fact that we live in a world now where we don't get stuff like this. We should. Where everybody gets to have their own 
distinctive traits that separate them from the other. You know, Austin had the championship, his belt, uh, the catchphrases and all that. The Rock had the catchphrases. DX was the Generation X. Val Venus had the gimmick. Uh, it's so many people had their own thing. This match was good, by the way. Of course it was going to be good. It's Owen Hart and Ken Shamrock. Really good match. And Ken Shamrock made Owen Hart tap out. So Mankind was scheduled to fight the New Age Outlaws for the tag team titles with his partner Kane. Unfortunately, Kane no-showed. So it was Mankind versus the New Age Outlaws by himself. And as you would imagine, he got his ass kicked. Badly. But he put up a good fight, which is why I thought this was a solid match. He lost after taking a spike pile driver on the freaking title. And then that was after he took a powerbomb through some chairs. Mick Foley just takes punishment. He took a lot of punishment this year. And don't get me started on King of the Ring, 1998. Good God. But he was becoming that lovable, sympathetic babyface. So, of course, this was the right thing to do with him. You want people to care about him. But then after the match, the New Age Outlaws toss him in a dumpster. And then in that dumpster was Kane, who proceeds to beat the living hell out of him because. So, ugh. Lots of craziness going on. But that was when Kane and Taker were teaming up. WWF Intercontinental Championship, a SummerSlam classic. The match of the night, in my personal opinion. The Rock with Mark Henry from The Nation taking on Triple H with China from Degeneration X. These two would go on to have one of the most notorious matches in WWF history, going all the way to 2000. I do remember them having a feud in 1999, too. Regardless, this match was fantastic, an absolute classic. Their best match at SummerSlam, for sure. If they do have another match at SummerSlam. They do, because they have a triple threat with Kurt Angle at SummerSlam 2000. Um, but so far, this is their creme de la creme. And Triple H ends up winning the IC Championship. Now, Rock would later go on to win the WWF Championship and become the corporate figure. You're starting to see him figure it out. But he's not fully developed into the people's champion. Next year, he will be. And going forward, he definitely will be. So, all right. Main event, WWF Championship. Stone Cold Steve Austin defending his belt against The Undertaker. And what I thought was a fantastic match. Now, Austin has gone on record saying he did not like this match. He felt like it wasn't gripping the audience. He felt like it wasn't as good as he wanted it to be. Because midway through the match, Taker knocks him out by accident. You know how Taker does the whole spot where he puts his body down, he gets kicked, he comes up, and he no-sells? He did that to Austin, but when he did it, he hit Austin in the chin with his head. And it knocked him out. Literally knocked him out. Yeah, I can see how Austin would not like this match, but I thought it was a fantastic match. I love that Austin had to cheat, basically, to beat Taker. He even said, I will cheap shot you if I have to, to win this championship, because it matters to me that much. You know, I love that we have these baby faces who are baby faces, but they're not scared to get a little dark. You know, we can't have every baby face be white knights. White knights. Awesome match. I really love the main event. I love this pay-per-view. This was a really good show. I'm happy I went back and checked this out. One of the positives about doing this series is not just to revisit the pay-per-views that I loved, but also to see the ones that I'd never seen and then check out new stuff that I never thought I would like. I really like 1997. I like this show even more. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's my review of 1998. Give me your thoughts on 98. But thank you for watching. This is your boy, The Last Man, signing off right here in The Last Man's World. I'm out. Peace.